If you've just received your first 3D printer, stop. Pausing to watch this video will save you a lot of frustration on day one. I'm not gonna take any of the fun out of getting started. I just wanna show you a few simple things that will help you get it working properly the first time. I've set up a lot of 3D printers over the years and I've pretty much made every beginner mistake there is. This video is here to help you avoid those mistakes and get your first print done right without panicking if something goes wrong. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. So first things first, whatever type of 3D printer you've got, there will be a couple of things to do before plugging it in and turning it on. Start by finding yourself a bit of space. Ideally, you want a clear tabletop, but wherever you're going to set up your printer, make sure it's clear of any clutter or mess. There can sometimes be some small parts to assemble and you don't want to lose anything in the excitement of getting started. Take all of the parts out of the box and then lay them all out in a way that makes it easy to see everything. Remove all of the packing materials and double check that there's nothing left in the box before moving it out of the way somewhere. With every modern 3D printer, there will be a manual quick start guide or a QR code that you can scan to access a quick start guide. I'm not gonna go into model specifics here, but I do have a lot of setup and review videos on my channel if you do need something more specific for your printer. This is not one of those occasions where you can bluff through without opening the manual. It's very important that you follow the first couple of steps in the guide that comes with your particular printer. With some machines, it will be cutting or removing transport fixings. With others, there may be some minimal assembly, but please don't skip this part. It won't take long and it's very important to follow the specific instructions for your model up until the point where you turn it on. Once you've reached the part where your printer is built and it seems like you're ready to turn it on, stop. There is one last very important thing to check that could really ruin your day if you miss it. That thing is the voltage setting. This is probably one of the most important parts of the whole setup, so don't rush it. These 3D printers are shipped all over the world, so they have to work with different countries' voltages. Many 3D printers now sense the voltage automatically, but many also need setting manually. And if the setting is wrong, you could seriously damage your printer. If you do need to set the voltage manually on your printer, there'll be a switch that looks a lot like this one, somewhere obvious, usually on the back or side of the printer. It should also be very obvious in the manual or quick start guide too. What setting you need to use will depend on where you live. Most of the world uses 220 to 240 volt, while many areas of North and South America and Japan use 110 to 120 volt. If you don't know what to use, check and be sure before turning your printer on. If there's no mention of a voltage setting in your manual and no obvious switch, then it is very likely that your printer senses voltage automatically. This is very common now on new 3D printers. Have one last final check that every stage of setup from the manual has been completed and that all of the packing materials and fixings have been removed. Then plug your printer in using the provided lead only and turn it on. Most 3D printers will now take you through a short setup procedure where you select your language, enter your Wi-Fi details if you want to, and then they run through some form of automatic calibration. This can be quite quick and simple, or it can be more involved. However long it takes, it's important that you let it complete fully for the very best first print experience. Before it starts, make sure your printer is on a level flat surface, ideally in the place where you plan to use it. Modern 3D printers sense things like how much they're gonna move when printing. So if you move the printer after the calibration phase, you should really get it to do the calibration again afterwards for best results. If you've made it to this point, you're doing great so far. While the printer is getting itself ready, it's time to get your filament open and ready to use. Filament is what the string-like material that 3D printers use is called. It comes supplied on rolls and you need to handle it a little bit carefully to avoid headaches. The single most important thing to do when handling 3D printer filament is to keep hold of the end. Filament needs to unwind cleanly as your printer pulls it and letting go of the end will very likely allow the filament to tangle. Any tangles in the filament will stop the print from completing successfully. So when you hold the filament, always hold onto the end or make sure it's tucked into the holes on the side of the spool in a way where it can't get loose. Generally, I always leave it tucked into these holes right up until the point where I'm about to feed it into the printer. So hopefully by now your printer has completed its setup and it's now time to load your filament. 
every 3D printer should have a place for the filament spool to sit and rotate. Some have a horizontal post, some have rollers and bearings, and some have multi-filament holders that allow multi-colour printing. If you do have a multi-filament printer, just load one single spool of filament for your first print. If this is your first time printing, the filament you want to be using is PLA. There are other options that allow you to do all types of things, but PLA is the most common and it's the one to start with. If you receive some filament with your printer, it will be PLA. If you don't have any filament and you need to order some, buy PLA. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Buy one kilogram of simple PLA. Nothing fancy, just something like black or white. And it also needs to be 1.75 millimeters, which most of them are. There are many different brands to choose from and you don't need to buy anything expensive. I'll put some links in the description to budget brands I trust if you want them. Loading the filament is done slightly differently on each machine, but the basics are the same. The nozzle of the printer needs to get hot and the printer's motors need to pull the filament through, usually after you've manually fed it in to a certain point. Before you feed the end of the filament into the printer, cut any kinks or bends off of the end with either some cutters or even just some scissors if you don't have cutters. This is to make sure it feeds in cleanly without snagging. One way or another, you will likely have to tell your printer that you want to load filament, except if you have a multi-filament feeding unit, in which case it's often just a case of feeding the end in one at a time and the printer will automatically heat the nozzle and load the one it wants when the print starts. Filament loading options are usually pretty obvious in your printer's screen menus and most manuals and guides supplied with your printer cover it well. If you notice any smells or hear motor noises while loading filament, it's all very normal, don't worry. Once your filament is loaded, you're very nearly there. The hard part's done. We're now going to find something to print. If your printer came with a USB stick or SD card, insert it and look for an option in your printer screen for print or USB or something similar. We're trying to find preloaded print files that your 3D printer manufacturer has supplied to get you started. You may have a lot of files to choose from, but pick something small. All we're doing is getting a simple first print complete. Maybe save the Flexi Dragons for later. Now, before you hit print, just some final checks. Did you load filament? Is your print surface fitted correctly and is it clean? And have you checked that there are no obstructions on the bed or print surface? If everything's good, hit print. The printer will now heat the bed and the nozzle and probably run through a few minutes of its own checks before starting to print. Hopefully, your first print will start and complete without any issue. However, if things don't go to plan, don't panic. It's very likely to be something simple and I'll give you a few things to check. If the filament doesn't stick to the bed and gets pulled around with the nozzle, or if anything else is obviously wrong, cancel the print on the printer's screen. This is really common on first prints, so don't worry. Ideally, with something like a pair of tweezers, remove any lumps of filament from the nozzle after it's stopped moving. The reason we use tweezers is that the nozzle is still hot and you don't want to burn yourself. If there are any lines of filament, these are called purge lines on the bed, gently remove them or let the bed cool and then remove them. Now, try the same print again and carefully watch the first layer of the print going down as this is where 99% of all 3D printing problems occur. What we're going to do is to try and quickly understand what's not quite working right before we fix it. Now, what we're doing here, stopping, observing what's happening and figuring out what needs changing, that's problem solving. And that's exactly the reason why this video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is built around the idea that you already can figure things out. You just need the right way of learning. Instead of passively watching lessons, you work through real problems step by step using visuals and interaction until the ideas actually make sense, just like you're doing with this video. What I like about Brilliant is that it doesn't assume you're bad at maths or science. It treats you like a thinker and helps you build that intuition properly. You're not memorizing formulas, you're understanding why things work. I've been using Brilliant to sharpen my own problem solving skills, especially around logical thinking and cause and effect. The exact same kind of thinking you're using when setting up and troubleshooting something like a 3D printer. Brilliant personalizes what you see based on where you're at, so you're always being challenged at the right level. And you can really feel yourself making progress as things start to click. If you want to try it out, you can learn for free at brilliant.org forward slash Ricky or scan the QR code on screen.
Brilliance also giving you 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited access to everything on the platform. Right, now let's get back to the printer. For a 3D print to be successful, the first layer has to stick to the bed. For this to happen, a few things have to be right. The surface of the bed needs to be clean and the melted material needs to be pushed into the surface just the right amount for it to stay stuck. If the nozzle is too far away, then the filament won't be pushed into the surface enough. And if it's too close, then the nozzle will scrape on the print surface and stop the filament coming out at all. Nowadays, printers should set the nozzle position automatically, but if it's wrong, you'll see it by the way the filament that's pushed out or extruded behaves. If your printer doesn't fix this issue by running through the calibration process again, then the setting you're looking for is called Z or Z offset. If everything looks right, but the filament is just not sticking, then your print surface may be dirty. The easiest thing to clean it with is IPA or rubbing alcohol, but if you don't have any and your print surface is removable, simply wash it with soap and water and then try to only touch it on the edges afterwards. Your fingers have oils that can make it hard for prints to stick, so you don't want to touch the print surface if you can avoid it. This should solve the vast majority of first print problems, but I've got some far more detailed deep dives on this kind of thing on my channel, and more specifically, in this playlist. Once your successful first print is finished, don't try and yank it straight off the bed. It will likely be stuck quite well while everything is hot. Just leave it to cool down for a few minutes and it will likely pop right off or at least be much easier to remove. If you really can't wait and you've got a magnetic bed, then remove your print surface and put it somewhere to cool as it will release much quicker this way than leaving it on the printer. Once your removed print surface is cooled down, you can flex it, which will make the print pop straight off. You can leave your printer switched on between prints. It won't use much power, but if you're not going to print anytime soon, don't switch it off straight after the print finishes. Let it cool down for five minutes first. This just lets everything get cooled down quicker by the fans and avoids something called heat soak. You can leave the filament loaded ready for next time, or you can use the printer's screen to unload it if you don't want it sitting on the printer. Just remember to keep hold of the end if you do. Well done. You've now well and truly started your 3D printing journey. And with a successful first print done, you know that your printer is ready for all those crazy projects you actually wanted it for. When you want to print things that didn't come supplied with your printer, have a look at one of these videos for how to set up your own prints using Slicer software. Check out the top one if you've got a Bamboo Lab printer, and if not, check out the other one. Hit subscribe if you want to see more from me about 3D printing, and I'll see you in the next one.